this is Joe from Mass True to Me. Today we're doing coordinates and graphs and we're going to look at scatter plots. So often when we're plotting points on our Cartesian plane, we get things that are in straight lines. But sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're just a big clump of results like this. And there's nothing that we can see that relates the two variables together. We say when that happens that there is no relationship between the two variables. They're just all over the place, dots everywhere, no relationship. When they line up really well, maybe not perfectly, but really well like that, they're almost in a straight line. We would call that a strong relationship. And because as this one is increasing, this one is increasing, we call that a positive relationship. They're both increasing together. So that's a strong positive relationship. Now the points can get a little bit further apart and the further they apart they get, but still looking like they're in the positive direction, the weaker the relationship gets. So this is a weaker relationship than this one. So a weak positive relationship because they're still both increasing. So they're still positive. This one, however, you can see that this line is going the opposite direction. As this variable is increasing going up here, the y variable is actually coming down. It's decreasing. This is a negative relationship. So we're going to draw a scatter plot today and have a look at the relationship that we find. So here is a table that shows the height and mass of 10 year seven students. H represents the height in centimeters, M is the mass in kilograms. All right, here are our results. The smallest height is 125 centimeters. The tallest height is 170 centimeters. Okay, that's going to be the variable that goes on our horizontal axes down here. So let's draw a line across the bottom. Now we don't want to have to start our numbers at 125 because that would squish our graph, our, our graph up and we wouldn't be able to see our results very well. So what we can do, if we have a big jump from zero like that, we can do a little zigzag line like this on our axes to indicate that we're going to skip some of the numbers and we're going to start at our smaller number, smallest number, which is 125. Okay, then what we're going to go up by. We're at 125 here and 170 is our highest number. So that's 45. I think we should be able to go up by five. So that would make 130, 135, 140, 145, 150, 155, 160, 165, 170. And we need to label our axes. So we're going to put height down here, measured in centimeters. The vertical axis is going to be the mass in kilograms. So now we're going to draw our vertical line and we need to work out what scale we can use for that. Okay, having a look through here, the smallest number I can see is 48. So again, there's quite a jump from zero. Let's do our little zigzag line again. And let's start at 48. Now, 48 to 74. So 48, 58, 68. So that's 26 numbers in between. Not going to be 26 spaces here. I don't think twos, so 48, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. No, I think we might need to go fours. So let's go 52 going up by 4, 56, 60, 64, 68, 72, 70. Six. and we've gone high enough for that. All right, so now we can plot our points on there. When the height is 125, the mass is 48. 125 and 48 is right there. So you can do crosses. I like crosses. You can do dots if you prefer. 
127 is our next one at 51. 127 about there, 51. So you just need to be as accurate as you can. Next one, 132, 56. 132 about here, 56 about there. 133, 55, 33, 55, I've actually come down a little bit, about there, 137, 58, 137 would be here, 58 would be right in the middle of 56 and 60, 144, 61, 144 is here, 61, there, and 150, 62, 150, 62, 158, 68, 58 be that there, and what was the other one, 68. 164, 70, about here, and 170, 74, there you go. So we can see that as height is increasing, the weight generally is increasing as well. So that would be a positive relationship, and it's actually a fairly strong relationship there, isn't there? It's not too widely spread out. So I would describe that relationship as being a strong positive relationship. Okay, time for you to try one. Okay, so practice time. I'd like you to pause the video, plot this scatter plot and describe the relationship and then restart to see if you get the same thing as me. So the table below shows the daily temperature and the number of hot sausage rolls sold at the canteen. So the temperature, we have some varying temperatures here, T is for temperature, and N, the number of sausage rolls sold at the canteen. So display the data on a scatter plot. So the temperature is going to go across the bottom. That is in degrees Celsius. Now our temperature, the smallest temperature I can see is 15. The highest temperature is not that one. This one here is the highest temperature. So 15, 25, 35, so that's a 23 spaces there that I need. Okay, so let's do our little zigzag so we don't have to start at zero. So let's try going up by twos. If we start at 15, that will be 17, 19, 21, 23, 25, 27, 29, 31, 33, 35, 37, 39, so we've gone past our highest temperature, so we can stop there. On the vertical axis, we have the number of sausage rolls that are sold at the canteen. The smallest number is a seven. Let's do our zigzag. We're gonna start at seven. Well, what have we got from seven to 42 is the highest. That's like a 35 space gap. So why don't we go up by fives? Now starting at seven is probably a strange way. Let's start at five instead. So five, 10, 15, 20. All right, there we go. And that can be our number of sausage rolls sold. Let's plot the graph. When the temperature is 15 degrees, 
We've sold 42 sausage rolls. Oh, I actually need to go. I didn't go quite far enough, did I? I need to go to 45. Okay, so 15, we go to 42, way up here. So about there. Okay, so cold day, sold quite a few sausage rolls. 27 degrees, we sold 30. So temperature is 27, sold 30. Ooh, there and there. 30 sausage rolls. Next one, 24. We shall be in here to 26 in there. Yeah, about there. Okay, 35 and 18. 35 here, 18 up there. 38, 7. 38 is quite hot up here. 7. What's next? 29 here and 22 about there. 18, 37, so 18 degrees down here. And we go up to 37 sausage rolls. 20 degrees is here. And we sold 36. In there. And 33 degrees, sold 14 sausage rolls. About there. Okay, so let's try to be accurate. It does. It is a little bit tricky. So you can actually see there is kind of a linear relationship here. The warmer the temperature is you seem to sell less sausage rolls. So on cold days, you sell more sausage rolls in general than on the warm days where you would sell less sausage rolls. I guess people don't want to eat hot food when they're hot. So if we describe the relationship between the number of sausage roll, or the temperature and the number of sausage rolls sold, I would say that's still quite a strong relationship there. Or maybe we should call that moderate so there's a little bit of gap. There is a bit of gap. Maybe we'll say that's a moderate relationship. Moderate, negative, okay, because the number of sausage rolls is decreasing as the temperature is increasing. So it's a moderate negative relationship. Okay, that's the end of our lesson today. Keep practicing. I'll see you next time. Bye.